Hello, welcome to Jackrabbit Journal. We've got a good story coming up this week on women's basketball player Alexis Alexander and her improvement uh, from her freshman to her sophomore season. A rabbit fire interview coming up with Jake Biddle where he has some fun at his uh, teammates' expense. And Professor Brad Newitt will join us in a moment to assess how the Jacks have played so far this season. Almost halfway through the Summit League season and the women won twice at home over the weekend. They beat IUPUI on Thursday. Thursday had to go to overtime, double overtime to do it. Ellie Thompson with 13 points, 12 rebounds. Carrie Young with the team high 16 points for the Jackrabbits. Gabby Bover in the starting lineup to replace Clarissa Ober, who was out with a hand injury. And the Jackrabbits beat a team that plays defense as well as anybody in the Summit League. I think Brad played really well defensively. They're just a hard team to score on. There's a reason they're always kind of in every game. They do a great job defensively. And and uh, we really feel like Rogers is one of the best kind of back to the basket post players in the league. She's a, a really, really good player, tough one to stop. Um, not having Clarissa, you know, this is a game where she really helps in that, that regard against a player like her. Uh, we expect her to probably be out through the weekend and hopefully uh, get some good news next week and have her back. You know, going to this game, we're just trying to get the ball out of the post hands. You know, 33 is a good player for them. So, you know, just digging on them and um, trying to make other players make plays was a big game plan for us going into this game. Their defense is great, great on, on the ball defenders. Um, they they kind of play off of you, so you're not necessarily ready to shoot it, but you can't drive either. So we got to move in, get in um, ball screens, because they don't defend that very well. So that's that was kind of our game plan coming in, a lot of ball screens, a lot of movement to kind of wear them out. They're a tough team to, to, to play. Um, and their record shows it, you know, how they played here is really not any different than they've been playing all year. Um, and we're just not quite sharp enough offensively yet, uh, or haven't been these last couple of games to, to really get any separation. You know, our defense, I think, has been keeping us in there and been good enough. Uh, but offensively, we're going to have to clean things up. Still turning it over too much. Um, our ball movement at times gets a little stagnant, and, and some things we're going to have to do a little bit better. At. While the Jackrabbits were better on Saturday, and Western Illinois does not play the defense that IUPUI does, but still, Jacks shoot 48%. They take 30 threes and make 13 of them. Maddie Giebert with five threes and 21 points, and another good game for Kerry Young with 17 points and seven rebounds. The Jacks lead the entire game. They win it by 22. So the women are 6-1 in the Summit League, and they are tied for first with USD and Oral Roberts right now. The Jackrabbit men, meanwhile, just when things were looking a little shaky, they win two big games on the road. Jake Biddle back in the lineup in a solid win at Oral Roberts. Biddle with eight points in his return, and George Marshall with 18 points in a good 12-point win there over ORU. And then on Saturday at USD, the Coyotes get out to a four-point lead at halftime, but Biddle breaks out with 21 points and seven rebounds. Mike Dom ties the season high with 23 points, including four for four at the three-point line. And the Jacks win for the first time in three years in Vermillion. And this is win number 400 for head coach Scott Nagy. It just means I've, I've been fortunate enough to coach for a long time, and I've had great assistants and great players and that's the only way to do that uh, and I've always known that and um, I'm, more, I'm more proud of where our kids play tonight than, than and it's just a number I know that but I <clears throat> I just enjoy, enjoy coaching these guys and that's how you get there. You know I knew I'd have to uh, come out and be aggressive um, for our team and you know we uh, we did a good job of uh, matching their intensity early and I carried over to the second half. Our guards were good at coming off those screens aggressively, so that's what got me open. It's unbelievable that I'm running, that, I, that I'm running plays for pick and pop threes for a six nine freshman, uh, but we did tonight because he was shooting it. Dom was shooting it. Uh, he is the Summit League Player of the Week this week by the way. Well, Coach had high praise for one of his leading scorers, even though he didn't score much in this game at USD. We'll talk about that and get an early report card on the Jacks from our basketball analyst, Brad Newitt, when we come back. Jack Rabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Dakota Land Honda. Welcome back. Joined now by Brad Newitt, by day a high school physics teacher, by night he is a basketball coach and a TV basketball analyst. And the SDSU men knew it right now. They're 16 and five overall, five and two in the Summit League, and halfway through 
the conference season now, what's the midterm grade you would give to the Jackrabbit? No. Right now, I'd have to grade them out as a B-plus, Tom. Really? And some of that a little bit out of their control. Obviously, injuries have played a big part in this team season so far. And, you know, you got to work around that. I think we've seen now what this team can do when they're healthy. They just had a fabulous road swing. They win two games, win at Oral Roberts, obviously win at USD. So the potential for this team to grade out as an A to an A-plus is there as the Summit League season goes on. They still have some kind of kinks to work out here as they're getting back healthy. B-plus. Sounds pretty good, though. Uh, Jake Biddle back after missing six games with a knee injury. What is the best thing that JB brings to the table right now? In my opinion, it's emotional energy, and I think we saw it at the game at USD. I mean, he really willed this team to victory. Uh, I think he really saved this team in the first half, quite frankly. They were struggling to score points, and Biddle was the one guy who was really getting it done in the first 20, kept them in the game, and prevented USD from blowing the thing open in the first half. I think the key thing for South Dakota State, they were only down four at the half, Tom, and that gave them kind of some new life. Uh, you know, George Marshall gave him a nice spark heading into the into the halftime. But for me, Biddle is the emotional leader of this team, and we've seen that play out. Yeah, and the emotional toughness and physical toughness, especially in that first five, yeah. he's got to be the guy, right? He is, and I think other guys feed off of that. And when you when you take that energy guy out of your lineup, you, it's hard to then you know kind of have the other guys who maybe it doesn't come as natural for than to try to produce that. Uh, you know, I think we saw what what South Dakota State's capable with having Biddle kind of leading the charge there. And with him back, you get the starters back in their minutes and you get the sub guys back in their minutes and that, that's very important to get that rotation back now and have all these guys back doesn't it there's no question i think we saw that at oral roberts yeah, the south Dakota state bench scores 40 points in that game and i think a lot of that had to do with the fact that you know a guy like a tevin king a keaton moffett those two guys in particular they're not as much on their shoulders. They're coming in off the bench. They can be the energy guys that they can be off the bench. And they're also then going up against, a lot of times, the other team's second team players as well. Big difference for a Moffat and a King when they don't have to go up against the other team's starters in the production that they can do. And yeah, just getting everyone back to their, their roles. I think also having Mike Dom is a guy who's just flourished being off the bench. You know, we can see the great production he's having there too. And so. Getting all the pieces back in place, I think South Dakota State's going to be really happy with how things are kind of lining up here now. And you pointed out, in that Oral Roberts game, the starters did not shoot a free throw. In that yeah, that was Roberts, remarkable. The bench guys were 11 of 13. The starters did not even attempt a free throw. Yeah, that's that's a big part of why they had the 40 points off the bench. You know, Moffat and King in particular, they had really good games compared to what they've been producing. And what can we say? Dom's been Dom the whole year. I mean, he's just been Mr. Consistency, and uh, he did it again there, too. All right, Scott Nagy uh, talked about how DeAndre Parks played at South Dakota. He took eight shots in the game. He averages 13 shots mm -hmm. per game. He ended up with eight points. He fouled out. How big a deal is it for a kid to swallow his ego and sacrifice for the team, especially a guy that scores as much as Parks? That's a tough thing for a guy, especially when he's a senior. And, and Parks has been the leading scorer on this team pretty much the whole year, like you said, leading shot taker. And a guy that I think this team really looks for when they know they need a difficult shot to be made. And so... To me, that showed a lot, and I thought Parks played an excellent game defensively. I know Scott Nagy really uh, praised him as well, but he drew the task of guarding Casey Kasperbauer in that game, which is USD's best player. thought he did a fabulous job shadowing him everywhere he went on the floor. Really made life difficult for Kasperbauer. Kasperbauer got 14 points, but it took him 10 shots to get it, and a lot of that had to do with Parks' D. And, and a guy, Gandhi Parks, you hear whispers, oh, he's, he's selfish because he takes so many shots. It's kind of disproved that quite a bit, didn't it? I think so. Uh, you know, and some of that is when, you, when they didn't have George Marshall in the lineup, didn't have Jake Biddle in the lineup, who else is going to take those shots? Parks kind of had to be the guy for a good stretch of games there. And, and then it's tough for, for Parks maybe to shift out of that role when those guys get back. But I think he showed a great uh, job putting the team first. And look at the result, two road wins. If there is still a deficiency or a vulnerability right now for the Jackrabbit men, what is it? To me, it's still offensive consistency, especially away from Frost Arena. Uh, we've seen it here, kind of kind of the Dow Jones, I kind of call it, where you know they shoot 50% one game, and then they go up to Fargo and they shoot 29%. And then it's back to 50% at Oral Roberts. The first half in Vermilion, it was right back to below 30%, and this team really looked like they just haven't been able to put together the offensive I guess efficiency and consistency that I think this team's capable of. 
So that's an area of improvement for them. But they can get better in that area and be consistent game in, game out. They're going to be really tough to beat. Which makes it very interesting Thursday when <laughs> Omaha comes yep. to Frost Arena to take on the Jacks. Do you see a game in the 60s? Do you see one in the 90s? What do you see on Thursday? Uh, I think more trending towards the 90s. I, I, I will be surprised, honestly, though, if it gets to that point. I think it's going to be more in the 80s. But these are two teams that certainly love up-tempo. We know Omaha. They're one of the top ten country in the country in pace and in possessions per game. It's going to be a, a, just an exciting game to watch, but there's really a lot on the line for the South Dakota State team. If they have visions of winning the conference championship, they've, they've got to hold their serve here and win this game at home against the lead leaguer. All right, we've got that game uh, here on Midco Sports Network coming up Thursday night. We will talk about the SDSU women when we come back. They face Oral Roberts, a team this week that has won six in a row are the Jacks women playing offensively well enough right now to get the job done. Jack Rabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Dakota Land Honda. Welcome back. By the time this show is on, new at the SDSU women's game at Oral Roberts should be early in the second <laughs> half right now. I'm going to say the Jacks are ahead by four right now because Oral Roberts has been pretty good at home. Uh, they've won their last three Summit League games at home so far. They've been good on the road too, but uh, a midterm grade right now for the SDSU women's basketball team. Well, considering the whole season, I'd have to give them an A. They had a great non-conference. They only lost three games, and those three teams they lost to, Tom, were all nationally ranked teams. Uh, and then, they, of course, they had the home loss to USD, but they put themselves in a position where they could still be on the outside talk of getting an at-large bid to really? the NCAA tournament. They're probably going to have to win the rest of their games to do it, but they're still in a position to do it, and this team's capable of pulling that off. And that's assuming they would lose the Summer League Tournament Championship. Correct. They could still have a good enough season, possibly. In, in my this, opinion, I think they team. could, yes. Yeah. So. All right, uh, Jax got a big win at home against IUPUI. They had to go to double overtime to do it. Do you take that and run and say <laughs> thank you, or should that game not have been that close at home? Uh, I don't think the game should have been that close. With that said, though, IUPUI is playing really good yeah. basketball right now, and they're a team that's really coming on. They're a very athletic, very tough team to score against, and South Dakota State struggled offensively right now. That's the one area of the game that they, they haven't played well in. They were very fortunate to get that one. If they had lost that one, that one really would have been a kind of a, definitely a stub your toe type of game if you have visions of winning the summer league all right and the offensive struggles the jacks are still scoring 71 points a game in league games that is second in the mm -hmm. league they're still scoring some points but uh not maybe as as playing as well as as they're capable of 15 turnovers a game is hurting them yes. right now and they've had more than that in the last couple but they're still one of three teams in the league with a positive turnover margin per game. It's a pretty slim number, it is. But, <laughs> but still, they're, they're having more assists per game than they are turnovers. And that part's been good. I think the thing that's been the eye-opener for me is just their lack of shooting percentage. They had four straight games, Tom, where they shot 40% or less. Snapped out of against, against Fort Wayne and, and had a 48% outing in that one, so you could see it, it start to click there. But... Uh, I think this is a team that really needs to find a little bit more consistency on the offensive end, especially in how efficient they score. Some of that could be reducing the turnovers. Some of it's also just uh, getting a little bit higher quality shots in their offense. Macy Miller in her sophomore season now, averaging 15 points a game, five rebounds, 1.2 assists to turnover. Those are exactly the numbers that she finished with in the league last year. Her shooting percentages are down yep. a little bit. Is she playing well, or would you like to see more out of your so-called star player right now? Well, when you have a great freshman season like she did, I think the expectations yeah. were ratcheted up, and maybe somewhat unfairly. Um, you know, you lose a Megan Watashik from last year, I think everyone figures, well, Macy Miller's really going to start taking over and scoring. But you got to remember, she's getting probably even more defensive attention from the other teams than she did last year. So life's not easy for her. She, she gets a lot of double teams. She gets a lot of help defense focusing on her. Um, I think the key for her is not forcing the issue that if, if teams really do double team her, is, is finding the open teammate, distributing the basketball, making her team better. But then when the opportunities are there, continue to be the aggressive player that we know that she can be. Um, and I think she's had a great sophomore season, and I think it's only going to get better here in the second half of the Summer League. All right, one of the note, Clarissa Ober did miss uh, the last two games with a hand injury. The Jacks uh, did expect her back at Oral Roberts, that game going on as we speak. Jacks up by six, I'm going to say, right now in the second <laughs> half. Uh, thanks, Newitt. The SDSU bench has been A-plus in most games so far this season for the SDSU women. Alexis Alexander, one of the young subs that is picking up her game, her story next. 
Jackrabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Dakota Land Honda. Welcome back. One of the main contributors off the bench for the SDSU women this year is Lexi Alexander. She is from Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. Her minutes, her scoring, and her rebounding have all gone up during her sophomore season. David Brown has more on her adjustment in the SDSU rotation. Lexi Alexander is a smooth talker as is, but her game spoke volumes after one particular move against Arkansas in late November. When I first did it, I... I was just a crossover, so I saw her fall, so I was like, well, cool. <laughs> but like when I saw the video, I was surprised. I was like, whoa, I broke this girl's ankles. When Lexi goes out and makes plays against good teams, um, the Arkansas move is one that comes to mind that was fun for her, fun for the crowd, and a good reminder of what she's capable of. Uh, she got to the basket and made some really good finishes against Notre Dame, some of the best perimeter players in the country. So we sure hope she builds on that and continues to use those as her, her year goes on. Ankle breaking aside, Lexi's been a vital part of Aaron Johnson's rotation this season, averaging nearly 17 minutes a game and being relied on as the backup point guard. I view my role as being a spark off the bench, uh, come in, try to be aggressive on defense and help the team offensively get the offense moving, but definitely a defensive spark and just bring energy to the team. Lexi's really put a lot of time into her game in the offseason. She's more of a consistent shooter, uh, a little bit better at getting to the basket. She's mixed up some of her finishes going to the basket so she can go in there against players that are obviously going to be a lot taller than she is. The players may be taller, but the game isn't too big for Alexander. After shaking off some freshman year jitters, she knows that the Jacks rely on her ability and that she can deliver. The biggest thing is just I feel more confident on the floor and I feel like I'm able to do more things and I know what my role is on the team. We really like her and what she's doing. Also gives us the flexibility to play someone like Macy at an off guard or use her at a different position which changes her matchups which has been good for us too. So Lexi's uh, really having a good year and it's been fun to watch her. Up next, the Jay Biddle is back for the Jackrabbits and he is in the Rabbit Fire interview coming up next. Jackrabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Dakota Land Honda. Jake Biddle is from Bixby, Oklahoma. It's a town of about 25,000 people just south of Tulsa. Biddle has that headband thing going on right now, but he throws teammates Ian Tyson and Reed Tellinghusen under the bus in this week's Rabbit Fire interview with David Brown. All right, first question, Jake. What is either the best or worst nickname you've ever had? Uh, best probably just JB. That's what a lot of guys on the team call me. No, nothing that rhymes with Biddle or anything like that? Uh, I think when I was younger, uh, people called me Little Biddle, you know, when I, before I got my growth spurt, so. What is your favorite part of Bixby, Oklahoma? Favorite part of Bixby? I just think the we just have a real tight knit community, you know what I mean, and everybody knows each other, um, and it's just a great place to grow up. Was there like a gym or community center or a place you used to hang out with your friends back in the day? Yeah, you know we'd uh, we'd always go to you know like the YMCA or something and hoop there. So growing up in Oklahoma, are you a, a Thunder fan, a Sooners fan? Are you any sort of Oklahoma sports fan? Actually, I'm a Dallas Mavericks fan. You know, I'm I'm a loyal Mavericks fan. You know. Uh, the Thunder came in late, you know what I mean? So, you know, we didn't have a team in Oklahoma, so I had a root for the Mavs, and, you know, I'd say Oklahoma City is my number two team. What is the song on either your iPhone or iPad or iPod that people wouldn't expect you to have? Maybe that you're a little embarrassed to admit publicly that you embarrassed have. Embarrassed of, let's see. I just downloaded a whole Chris Brown album, so I don't know if that's embarrassing or not, but it's something. <laughs> something I guess. Okay, I, I got you. Uh, I love the new Justin Bieber album. Great. Great album. Great. Publicly admitting you're a Bieber. Oh, I'm, I'm a, a believer. believer now. I'm a believer now. I mean, great stuff. Do you have a hidden talent or do you want to learn something that's a hidden talent? Hidden talents. I'm, I'm a great singer in the shower. Great singer. Justin Bieber, I'm assuming. Definitely. <laughs> well, speaking of which, who's the celebrity you'd like to hang out with the most? Celebrity I'd like to hang out with... I have to go with Dirk Nowitzki. That's kind of been my role model my whole life. Still doing it. What's your favorite TV show of all time? Favorite TV show? 
I have to go with the office. That's, that's my go-to. Little, little old school. Yeah. Yep. Still watch it occasionally. So. Who is the smelliest teammate? The smelliest, without a doubt, Ian Tyson. Without a doubt. And, and what is it about? Because we've heard this answer in years past. Yeah, his, his hygiene level is just very low. You know, he's he's super messy. He's you know he's not clean at all. So I think that has a big you know a big deal with it. Have you tried to get him to, to clean up his accent speak? Tried, but it's, it ain't working. <laughs> <laughs> what teammate has the worst fashion sense? The worst fashion sense. I have to go with uh, Reed Tonghusen. He has no fashion sense whatsoever. Does not know how to dress himself. Again, if you're trying to help Ian smell better, are you trying to help Reed dress better? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, I think uh, those Iowans just lack style or something. You know, something like that. All right, last one. You and all your teammates, who wins a horse contest? Horse contest. I'd have to go with uh, I have to go with Dre. He's a great shooter, so go with him. But can he do the trick shots as well? Uh, I think so. Yeah, he's got a little. He's got some trick shots in him. And you wouldn't even say yourself. You're you're confident enough to admit you wouldn't win a horse contest. I mean, I'd be up there. I'm at the top, but uh, I don't know if I'd win it. Confident guy. Thanks, Jake. Tittle. Appreciate it. Well, thanks to Jake. He was great at USD on Saturday. You can see him this Thursday night. The Jackrabbit men hosting Omaha. We have that game live on Midco Sports Network at 7 o'clock. Should be great. We will see you then and see you next week on Jack Journal.